everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the... Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Need a Lift podcast. That's Need a Lift podcast with me, your happy host, Clyde Owen. Pleasure to have you back, everybody, and thanks for coming back. It's been a wild week, and I hope you've been oh so productive this week. Because productivity, never forget this, product, oh, productivity is the key to living a happy life. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, welcome back, you artist, you dreamer, you free thinker, you visionary. Now, today's pep talk, yeah, that's right, if it's your first time joining me at the Need a Lift podcast, just a quick mission statement, what am I doing here? I'll tell you what, I'm giving you, the creator in you, the innovator in you, a little lift, a little power up. A little leg up, a little kick in the pants, a little, how about a good what for? Stay tuned for that. A good what for. And in fact, that's what today's pep talk is all about. That's right. Every episode of the Needle Lift podcast starts with me revving you up to have a good week, making lots of wonderful works of beauty or doing whatever it is that you do. I don't know. Maybe you're a choreographer for chameleons. That'd be cool. Maybe you um, fletch arrows. Amazing, man. Maybe you carve soap into little figurines of William Shatner and sell them to old ladies down at the old swap meet. I don't know what you do, but it could be fucking anything. That's the point. That's the beauty. That's the brilliance. That it's all coming down from above. It's all coming from the same place. And it's all beautiful and it's all wonderful and it's all worthy so long as you're doing that thing that only you can do, all right? Because that's what's so wonderful about this world that we live in. It's that you are a part of it and you're doing your good works. And that's what today's pep talk is all about. I'm sorry, I've got to do this. Please, if you're just tuning in, pep talk's coming your way and it's going to be oh so uplifting, I'm sure. And it's totally off the cuff, cuff, totally unscripted, unrehearsed, unpremeditated. A -a one-of-a-kind pep talk it will be. Anyway, before I begin, though, please, would you subscribe? Would you hit the bell or whatever? Could you hit the this thing? Could you do that, please, for me as a personal favor? And my promise to you is that I will always be here uploading on Wednesday with another uplifting, uplifting sermon from here in my, I mean, if you want to call it a sermon, don't worry about it. Anyway, what I'm saying is you can feel revived, revitalized. You can listen to this and say, you know what? I forgot that I wanted to sew together a quilt this year, and I had that great idea, and I just didn't get around to it because I was busy learning how to use Zoom. Anyway, um, yeah, please, like and subscribe. Anyway, today's pep talk at the Need to Live podcast is all about step four in the five simple and basic laws of success. And if you know me, you'll know that I have been gifted with these five simple and basic laws of success as laid out by the late, great Walter Russell, who was a modern-day polymath, all right? Of course, he did die in 1963, so I don't know if you'd call him a uh, modern-day polymath, but he was certainly more modern than, say, Leonardo da Vinci. Though I, uh, for humility's sake, and I'm sure that Walter Russell would agree, I would not put him on the same tier as Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, I would put Leonardo da Vinci in the number one slot. He's top of the pyramid, as as far as I'm concerned. But that's coming from somebody who is diversely talented, as are you, I'm sure. That's the other thing that's so sad in this world is that it seems like we're trying to snuff out um, people's array. People have a, a gigantic array of talents. We all do. That's the beauty of being a little kid is that you've got all of this time to work on all of these different talents. And it's every adult, every goddamn adult around you. And they're coming up to you and they're saying, oh, well, you're quite a fine draftsman. Perhaps you'll be an architect like your old Uncle Jimbo. And you say, ah, no, I'd rather draw comic books. And they say, no uh, money in that. Meanwhile, you're out there dancing. Or you're out there playing soccer and everybody's saying, hot damn. 
You could be a, a ballet. You could be a ballerina. Or you could be a soccer fucking player. And you're saying, why can't I be all of these goddamn things? No reason you can't, but it's a tough road to hoe. You better get to work honing all of those talents. Because every single one of them is, a, is an artist, is a creator, an innovator, a doer. Inside of you. An individual entity that lives deep inside of you and it's crawling out, it's crying out, not crawling out, it's crying out for its chance at fame and glory. So you can push them down if you want or you can let them out. So let them out. What do you got to lose? And if you're old and washed up, I don't know what the age bracket of my audience here is, but if you're old and you feel like shit, I've gone and wasted all my goddamn time. I'm never going to get anything of value done now. I've barely got any time left. I say, no way. There's always time to do something. Because doing something is always better than doing nothing. And that's the beauty of being an artist, an innovator, a free thinker, is that your mind will develop like a fine wine. Everything you create is better than the last thing you created. And so on and so forth until you <laughs> die. But that's the thing, you got a very limited time here on planet Earth, so you had better get busy, whatever it is. As soon as you're done listening to this podcast, lay out the old plans. Cut your work out for yourself, and then get to it, baby. And I'm sure it'll be great. You will do it, okay, whatever it is. Now, today's, yeah, today's pep talk, before I go off on another tangent, is all about number four in the five principles. Now, what are the five principles? Humility, self-explanatory, reverence which I touched in last week's pep talk. You should check it out. It's great. Um, inspiration. Boop, boop. Listening. Yeah, for the spark. Uh, four, deep purpose. Now, that's the one I want to talk about today. And five, of course, is, huh, think about it real quick. What is that emotion of emotions? What is that emo the only emotion written into the United States Declaration of Independence? I'll tell you what. Happiness. Namely, your pursuit of it. Never stop pursuing it. It's never just going to go and boop, sit in your pocket. you got to keep chasing after it. It's right there in front of you. Go get it. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, today's all about deep purpose. So you, you artist, you creative, you free thinker, you innovator, you inventor, you, you bringer, you bringer of new things into the world. You have to ask yourself, before you even set forth on any goddamn given project, why you're doing it. Now, this might be a simple answer. You might say, I am doing it because I'm bored and I want something to do. Now, that's a reason. Is it a good reason? Maybe not. But it's a reason, goddammit. Now, as crazy as this sounds, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this the last week, and I do believe that there have been creative geniuses in this world that meant nothing but malintent. Their intention was indeed malicious. Now, they, now here's what I want to say, too, about intention. What is your intention? You want us to do something good or do something evil? Now, so many people, I think, simplify that into saying, well, perhaps... Perhaps if I'm not all sunshine and daisies all the time, then I'm doing something evil. I say wrong. God damn it. Now there are so many, think about how much joy you might get or somebody you know might get from watching a horror movie. Now this movie contains horrific images, images that might just haunt you, but you do it because you truly enjoy that rush of adrenaline that comes with it. That's fun. That is fun. Now, what is fun? Fun is feeling happy. Having fun is feeling happy. That's for damn sure, all right? So an artist who specializes, like, for instance, Stephen King or uh, Jorge Romero, whatever that fucking guy's name was, you know? Now, they're doing all kinds of doom and gloom and gore and ghosts and axe murderers and scary motherfuckers. But the point is, is that we all really love and respect those cats because they gave us a thrill is what they did. Therein lies their intention, to give you a thrill. Um, how about one of my favorite songs? I know it's pretty cliche, 
Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. A sad, a sad, sappy song. Every time I listen to it, the tears fall out of my eyes. And I wallow in grief. And yet, it's a welcome emotion. Now, it's not happy on the surface, on the surface level, but it does add so much positive value to my life to feel such a strong burst of sorrow that I know his intention was not malicious even in the slightest. Well, he wanted to give something great to the world, Leonard Cohen, when he wrote that goddamn song and when he sang it with his raspy voice and his fedora on his head his great big nose, all right? He was a good guy. Now, conversely, now I've got to go, I've got to venture into the realm of the dark here, is that there have been evil artistic geniuses that have befallen the world, all right? And I can only imagine, I mean, as much as I've pondered this, that their intention truly, truly was to ruin your day. Or to plant a little seed of poison in your brain. Now again, art is subjective. And people do want to say that. But someone's intention is their intention. And if you, if you as the interpreter of their art, hold the opinion that their intention was malicious, that's a valid opinion. Case in point. There's a poet I know. Oh, I don't know him personally. Now, he was a brilliant poet. That's for damn sure. And somebody to be respected, absolutely. And, yeah, his name was Charles. Charlie B. Charles Bukowski, who lived a tortured, horrific life, I'm sure. I can only imagine what terrible things befell that tortured soul. But... My point is this, if you pick up a collection of his poetry and you open up to some random poem and you read it, I will venture a guess that that poem you fall on at random will put a little sad sickness deep in your gut and you'll shudder and you'll go, oh, oh life is so ugly. Now, that's not to say that one in every hundred or so will leave you <gasps> mind blown and strangely enough uplifted out of nowhere. You'll say, where the hell did that come from, Charlie B? I guess you're not such an evil monster after all, but that's the point. Is I think a lot of times he was sitting up there and crafting ways in which he could poison your brain. Now, that's a malicious intention, if ever there was one. And that's something that I would rather not do, not to you. All right, so ex examine your intention. Think about your intention when you're doing these things, when you're making, when you're recording that album. When you're uh, designing. When you're designing that T-shirt that you're going to sell. Maybe that's a poor example. Examine your intention. Why are you doing this? Now, there's a filmmaker, a French filmmaker. I don't know his name, nor would I want to, because this film ruined my brain. And I still, I still linger on these images that were shown to me in this film. When I was in high school, by the way, it's a film called Irreversible. I'm sorry to even put it out there. I'm sorry to even mention this film. And I would say, do not watch it if you have not seen it. Do not watch it. It will ruin you. You might not ever be able to not think about it again because it's so disturbing. Now, I can only imagine that there was nothing good. This filmmaker wanted to be a parasite on you. He wanted to ruin you. He wanted to ruin my day, that's for sure. And not just my day, but it stuck with me forever after. And I am baffled that such an ingenious filmmaker 
could have such a terrible purpose. I, I can think of no other purpose that he might have intended with that film other than to haunt and disturb you for the rest of your life. Um, another one. On that exact same vein. And this was perhaps maybe the most evil creative genius that ever lived, but a French writer from the 18th century. In fact, I, I dare not even mention him by name in case you've never heard of him. I hope you never come across his work. This is somebody who wished to bring forth the most base and vile imagery that your mind might even be able to hold. Why would he do that? Because he wanted to torture you and he wanted to torture generations yet to come. Now that is an accomplishment to lay forth the groundwork for something that would torture generations for future, for, for hundreds of years to come. Who knows how, how long his effect will linger. But the point is, is that I can think of no other intention that he might have had besides to ruin your day, to poison your brain with something awful and ugly and terrible. So examine your intention, you artist, you dreamer, you free thinker, you think about why you're doing it, all right? I know you got a good intention in mind. I know you mean no harm. I know you mean no ill But create something beautiful, create something brilliant. And that's not to say that you can't create something dark or sad or scary. You can create lots of things, but examine the intention in your heart, all right? Because that's very, very important. And thus concludes the pep talk. That's a wrap. I hope you dug it, everybody. That was totally off the cuff, too. It just came out, came down from above. Okay, hey, everybody, I'm Clyde Always, and as a special treat, I have prepared a brand new poem. And I'm going to try my damnedest to do it off paper, but if I uh, fuck up, I know you'll forgive me. And on that note, this is a, a little slice of dark comedy, but dark comedy just happens to be my forte. So please, enjoy a new poem by me, yours truly, Clyde Always, entitled, A Good What For. As Fauci presided, I rightly decided for ultimate safety I'd strive. So, to showcase my caring, I'd never not w Fuck. Let's take it from the top. Hey, everybody, it's time for a good one for by me, yours truly, Clyde Always. As Fauci presided, I rightly decided for cautious compassion I'd strive. To showcase my caring, I'd always be wearing a double KN95. But Kevin and Karen, their faces so barren, they'd argue for argument's sake. Well, rather than ask them, I'd forcibly mask them. The life of my grandma's at stake. With alcohol rubbing, I'd always be scrubbing and bathing thrice daily in bleach. This price was I paying to know I was staying just out of the virus's reach. I found it appalling the sidewalks were crawling with people unburdened by fear. So every last stranger was told they endanger the life of my grandmother dear. Then frantic and spastic with single-use plastic, I walled myself off in my den and saran wrapped the ceiling and relished the feeling of COVID compliance. But then, my bubble I was in, I heard from my cousin the horrible tragedy that Graham ended up dying while fruitlessly trying to figure out video chat. Hey, everybody, I'm Clyde Always. Thanks for bearing with me. Anyway, moving this uh, 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 podcast right along. Every episode of the Needle Lift podcast includes an artist spotlight. And it could be anyone. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a, uh, an artist in the creative realm, as we think of it. It could be, uh, it could be an, an inventor or scientist. It could be a, um, an athlete, for all we know. It could be somebody who created a new way of doing something or looking at the world or who brought something into the world that we all enjoy today. 
In fact, sometimes we completely take for granted that thing that it, they brought into the world, all right? As I touched in last week's pep talk, which was fabulous, by the way. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. Anyway, with no more further ado, or maybe with a, a little bit of more further ado, since that is my forte. Teasing. Stalling for time. That's what we call it in the biz, all right? Anyway, no, I'm not stalling for time. I'm feeling great, okay? We can run long, we can run short, we can do whatever we want. But today's artist spotlight is master filmmaker, satirist, screenwriter, director, John Waters. Oh, that's right, John Waters. Now, I, I never do, like, a full biography, in case you were wanting, uh, wanting a biography. That's le best left up to somebody else. My purpose in this artist spotlight is merely to uh, refresh in your mind the existence of this fine creator. And perhaps if you've never heard of them or hmm, been lucky enough to experience their work, perhaps it will inspire you to go and seek some of it out. And, oh, John Waters. You want to talk about dark humor, man. John Waters has made some of the most hilarious movie, movies of the second half of the 20th century. What's more, he got started as a gorilla. I'm talking about somebody just doing it, oh, not only on the cheap, but on the sly. He didn't bother with um, permits. He didn't bother with releases. None of that. No. He, just, he didn't bother with copyright issues. The hell with that? He just made his goddamn movies and put them out there, put them up in the theaters. And, and, and people came and they saw and they said, well, that was, well, that was crazy. I mean, seriously, if you watch some of these reactions to some of his early films, you would, yeah. People didn't see it coming. It was a one-two punch. It was gut-busting. And I mean, that is his brand of humor. Gross-out humor. He wanted to push the limits of what could be tolerated in the realm of hilarity. What is funny and what is just pure revolting. Now all that said, John Waters also was a master uh, crafter of dialogue of hilarious camp. That's what he represents to me. I mean, he is a guy with this little ugly uh, pencil mustache. All right? And he likes tacky stuff. He likes no frou-frou things. He likes stuff that's mm, gaudy. That's a great word for his aesthetic. The gaudy. That is our society. And didn't he just point it out so well? And didn't he have a good laugh? We just had a good laugh at all of us. He was a man with a one... I mean, he is a man with a wonder... I'm talking about him like he's dead. He's not dead. He's very much alive. In fact, only recently he wrote this fantastic book. I just can't remember what it's called. But it's all about his experiences as an older man... Sorry, you couldn't see that. Hitchhiking across the country. Check that book out, man. He's a, a Salvador Dali of our times. I mean, he is a, a true visionary. So uh, definitely go and check out some John Waters films, especially his early films. They'll blow your mind that anything could be so irreverent. That's a great word. Irreverent. A, a, to quote the back of one of, yeah, one of his earliest movies, Pink Flamingos, one critic described it as a paragon of poor taste, or something to that effect. <sighs> anyway, hey everybody, I'm Clyde Always, and I always close the Needle Lift podcast with an anecdote. An anecdote about being an artist, being a, um, ooh, a bohemian. That's a great word. That's what I am, and that's what you should be too. Go be a bohemian. Well, I guess we can't all be bohemians. Or maybe we can, I don't know. You gotta do you. But I always close it out with a true anecdote, a true life story about my life here in San Francisco as a bohemian that might just inspire you to go out there and live. I feel like there's so many young people who are so afraid to experience the real sights and sounds and smells and feelings that is life. All right, so get out there, close up, close your goddamn screen, get out there into the fucking world, go experience things, especially when you're a kiddo. When you're an old person, productivity. I, that's, that's my formula, by the way. 
Adventure and productivity are the key to happiness. If you're doing the same old thing and not doing enough and not having nothing to show for it, that is a, a surefire recipe for unhappiness. And you deserve to be unhappy if you sit around doing nothing. Sorry about it. No, I'm not sorry about it. Somebody had to say it. If you sit around and do nothing, you deserve that misery that befalleth thou. Anyway, no, no, no. I, I, if... But that's not you, Mr. or Miss Listener. I know. So be adventurous, okay? Now, this story is all about the last time I took acid. That's right, acid. LSD. No, if you've never done acid, let me just describe the experience in as few words as possible. It's something like... Your whole... The whole world around you melting and it's all... Everything's going... And every color is just... Like hitting you in the face. You can't stop the colors. They're everywhere. No, the colors, the colors. They're coming at you. If you're not ready for it, man. You want to talk about exhilarating. It is a wild ride. It's a roller coaster. You can't get off. And once you're once you're in line, you can't get out of the line. You're going to ride that roller coaster whether you like it or not, bud. Anyway, the last time I did acid, it was some strong shit. And I did it in the middle of the day, knowing that I was going to do two open mics that night. Why? I don't know, because I'm crazy. Anyway, I dropped acid with my friend and my new friend on the patio of Cafe International. And then I took a walk down to Mama Tree, and I sat there with Mama Tree. And before long, shabang, I was afloat in a river of who knows what. And I was paddling through this fucking river trying to get... And I'm serious. Like, you want to talk about every color of the rainbow. You can't imagine the colors you will see on this shit. If you haven't done it, you might want to try it. But don't tell them I sent you. Oh, baby. Anyway, the last time I did acid, my consciousness... I know this is going to sound nuts, but my consciousness came up off of my... It came out of my body. And my body was this marionette that was being pulled around by my consciousness. And my consciousness led my my marionette body all the way down to the brainwash. And I did a comedy set up there. And I was kind of coming out of it, coming, coming in and out. And I'd already peaked for sure by the time I got up there. That was the sad thing about the brainwash is that Tony Sparks would just throw people into the list so you'd you'd have a spot pretty far down and before you know it it's a little farther down than you thought it was you say well i wish i was part of tony's elite but i guess i'm not anyway not bitter just saying um after i had a terrific set it was a tremendous set at least i think it was i walked down to 16th and mission where they've got the grungy poetry circle and as i'm walking up there's like maybe 30 40 people standing around the circle, loosely dispersed, and as I'm walking up, I didn't even miss a beat, all right? Somebody was ending their set just as I'm walking up. Everybody claps, and I walked right in, and I launched into this monologue called Papa Always Giving Thanks, and it's this sinister little monologue. All about uh, the character who uh, who I named Papa Always, who talks kind of like, you know, uh, Sling Blade. He says, like, I gave up on Gab today. Well, always I used to say, well, I would say, Gab bless this and Gab bless that. And Gab bless my Lord Kevin and Gab bless my woman and Gab bless my boy. Anyway, this fascinating monologue goes on for about, oh, two or three minutes. And as I'm doing it, one of the... One of the BART trains let off. So people are coming out of the BART train and noticing that there's 30 or 40 people gawking in stunned disbelief at this performer in a circle with his pupils dilated like two big black saucers and him rattling on in this weird Appalachian dialect and not shitting you. Everybody who got off that train was like 200, 300 people are now standing around me gawking at me. And I come off, and I, I mean, I finish, I take a little bow, and they just roar in applause. And I'll bet you a damn dime I scared the fucking shit out of those people. 
which might have been my intention. And maybe it's what they wanted. I don't know. But the point is, is that it all worked out in the end. And it was a wild time. And I'm glad that I had that wild time. And I'm sure I've got some wild times left to go. So you, you go out and live, you. Don't stop for nothing or nobody. And everybody who wants to, every naysayer who comes along and wants to say, don't do it. Stay here where it's all nice and safe. You know what you do? You take your finger and you stick it in their eye. And you say, I'm going to go do what I want to do. Because this is my goddamn life. And it's the only goddamn life I ever have. So be adventurous. Be productive. And make sure you examine your purpose as a creator of wonderful things. It's been swell, everybody. Make sure, uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And, and please hit the like because it helps my algorithm. Anyway, hey, we'll see you later. Say goodnight, Kaylee. Mwah.